Hey, Michael Kerr here. One of the most common questions I get from audience members, from clients is, how do you add humor? How do you bring more fun into a really traditional conservative business industry or workplace? Like we live in a really, really conservative, uptight workplace. I mean, surely this stuff doesn't apply to us. How can we have fun? How can we bring humor into such a conservative workplace? Well, I've got seven tips for you to help you do just that. Tip number one, you need to clearly define what it is you're talking about, what it is you're not talking about, and what your ultimate goals are. So let's start with what it is you're talking about, because I think a lot of people, especially in conservative environments, get very nervous when they hear the phrase humor in the workplace or humor at work. So be really clear about what it is you're talking about and make sure people understand, no, you're not talking about being the office joker. You're not talking about being a stand-up comedian. So relax. We're not going to rush out and take stand-up comedy courses. It's not about poking fun at anyone. It's not about even always being funny. And it's certainly not about telling jokes or practicing inappropriate humor. It's about figuring out ways that you can use safe, positive humor to help you achieve your goals. It's about humor that laughs with people, not at people. It's about laughing at the things you have no control over and especially learning to laugh at ourselves more. After all, is it not a truism that the more seriously a person takes themselves, the less seriously we tend to take that person. So it's about lightening up on ourselves and it's not about taking our clients or our jobs lightly. It's about taking ourselves less seriously so that we can take our jobs, in fact, even more seriously, so we can take our customers' needs even more seriously and focus on the ultimate goal. Your ultimate goal isn't to turn your job into a cruise ship, unless you work on a cruise ship, and then I guess that is your job, but that's not your job. Your job isn't to figure out how to make work more fun necessarily. What you need to sell, especially in a conservative workplace, is how humor can benefit the goals that you want to achieve in any workplace. So focus on the goals that you want to achieve. Employee engagement, better customer service, less stress, building a more resilient, change-ready culture. How can we improve communication and collaboration in the workplace? These are the goals that you hopefully want to achieve and then bring up the idea that, you know, one way, it's not the only way, but one way that you can help achieve some of those goals is by maybe bringing a little more lightness and levity and humor and fun into your workplace culture. So focus on the ultimate downstream goals. Humor and fun are just tools to help you achieve those goals. Number two, challenge your assumptions. Very often I hear people just assume that humor is off limits in their workplace because of the nature of their work. I often have people say to me, well, you know, we can't bring humor into this kind of profession. To which I often say, well, really? Because I have examples of humor in your very profession. Look, I've researched humor in the workplace all over the world. I have come across examples, sometimes outrageous examples, of humor being used in every conceivable industry, in every conceivable profession you can imagine. Funeral directors, emergency room doctors, lawyers, lawyer. If lawyers can have for more fun people, there's no excuse for the rest of us. I'm just teasing you lawyers. I know that you have a great sense of humor, but my point is just challenge those assumptions. Challenge those assumptions that people don't necessarily want to have more fun in your workplace. Maybe it's just never come up as a topic because of the mix of personalities in your workplace before now and challenge the assumptions that you can't do it in your industry. Number three, you need to relentlessly champion and sell the benefits of humor in the workplace. There are so many studies. There are graduate level courses now in humor in business. The reason there are so many graduate level courses on this topic is because it's being taken seriously because it drives real results. There are so many studies. There are so many statistics. I could spend three hours just spewing statistics with you on how humor can help you lower absenteeism rates and employee turnover rates and improve engagement and retention and collaboration and creativity and innovation and customer service and all of those good things. But you need to champion that with your team, with your bosses in your organization. You need to sell the benefits. 
And one of the things I know that has worked really well for me when I've talked to companies all over the world is sharing real life examples. The more real life examples you can share, for example, in my book, The Humor Advantage, Why Some Businesses Are Laughing, all the way to the bank. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of real life examples. And when you share those examples, then it becomes real for people. People see that it isn't just theoretical, that businesses, organizations around the world are actually doing this stuff and it's paying off. It's making a huge difference to their financial bottom line, to their workplace culture, to the happiness, to the stress level of their employees. So sell the benefits and share real life examples. Here's a helpful little tip for you. If you buy copies of the Humor Advantage book, leave it on your boss's desk. And if they read it, maybe they'll get a little inspired and they won't be so frightened about the idea of humor in the workplace. Number four, set aside time to have an honest conversation about the role humor can play in your business or your workplace culture. Sometimes we just don't even talk about this stuff. So how is anything going to change unless you have an honest conversation about it? Talk about the role of humor in your workplace. Make it an agenda item on your meeting at your next offsite retreat in your planning forum. Talk about it, but talk about it in an honest way. If you as a champion of more humor in the workplace, if you can be the first person to say, look, I'm not saying it's all necessarily puppies and rainbows and unicorns. There could be some downsides with using some humor and, and let's acknowledge that and recognize that. And let's make sure people understand we're talking about positive forms of humor that help us succeed, not sarcastic forms of humor, not bullying types of humor, not humor that laughs at our customers. There's still a time and place for humor. So let's have an open, honest conversation around those parameters. The more you do that, the more likely it is that people are going to trust you and accept your message. So be a champion for humor, but engage in an honest conversation and just plan for an honest conversation so that it actually happens. Number five, as with any change, start slowly. Don't start off with a bouncy castle in your parking lot as your first idea to add a little fun into your workplace because people might look at you a little oddly. So look for simple little things you can do, the low hanging fruit things you can do that are simple to start slowly and that will start to shift your culture in tangible way. Number six, focus on a few key strategic areas that are going to have the biggest payout for you. I would suggest three areas to start off. Number one, add a lot more humor into your meetings. Meetings are an incredibly important touch point for people. Meetings should help you build your desired culture, but also reflect your desired culture. So when you add more humor into your meetings, it can send a powerful message that will spread out to your entire workplace culture. Number two, come up with some fun, wacky recognition awards. That's a very simple and usually a very safe way to add some humor into your workplace, into your team. And again, all these things always send a message as well, right? They send a powerful message about how you perceive humor in the workplace. So create some fun awards. And you've maybe heard me in some of my other videos talk about some of my fun favorite awards. Awards like the Houdini Award for whoever magically makes a big problem disappear or the Ha Ha Award for whoever keeps everyone laughing during really challenging, stressful times. And then the third area to focus on is rituals and traditions. Rituals and traditions help build a stronger culture. They create a sense of shared identity and shared history that foster collaboration. They give everyone something to look forward to and something to reminisce about. So if you want to impact your culture, come up with just one to start with, just one tradition or ritual that you can sustain in the long run. And you need to sustain this, right? There's nothing worse than starting something and then after a couple of weeks, it kind of fizzles out because people have lost interest and then everybody rolls their eyes and they become cynical and it just felt like window dressing. You need to pick something that is going to stick in the long run. And it could be something dirt simple. Maybe it's a Friday afternoon huddle, the way a lot of my clients do, where they have a fun celebratory huddle Friday afternoon to introduce new people who have arrived in the company, to celebrate the wins of the week, to have some fun goofy trivia games that they do, or whatever it may be, just a fun huddle to end the week with. Maybe it's a fun kickoff 
at the start of the week, just something. Maybe it's something simple and goofy like Third Person Thursdays, where everybody refers to themselves by their own name in the third person. Yeah, Mike thinks that's a great idea. Mike loves that idea. How stupid is that? But that's the kind of stuff that can make a shift in your culture as long as you stick to it. And last, number seven, if you want to jumpstart more fun, if you want to get things going a little quicker, I've seen a lot of companies have great success by creating a humor at work squad or even a humor ambassador position. Some companies do this where they get people to volunteer for the position, so people have to be keen on it. You don't want somebody who's not keen. People have to volunteer, or, or sorry, interview for it, just like they would with any other job. It has to be a volunteer position. In addition to their other duties, they get a small budget and for three months, they focus on activities, initiatives to bring a little more fun, a little more humor into their workplace. But the position only lasts for three months, which is great because that way everybody gets a crack at it or more people get a crack at it to be creative, to put their own spin on it and you make sure nobody burns out. So a humor ambassador or a humor squad position can really help to at least initiate some fun changes in your workplace. So what about you? Do you use humor in a very conservative environment? And if so, what do you do and how do you use humor in a conservative environment? What tips do you have? What questions do you have? Please leave a question or a comment in the comment box. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. Join our growing community. And if you want ideas on how to add more safe fun into your workplace, be sure to visit my website, www.mikekerr.com. At the bottom of the homepage, sign up for my newsletter, Inspiring Workplaces, and every week you'll get an injection of some great ideas and a little bit of fun that can help your workplace be more successful. And you'll get the free ebook, 401 Ways to Create a More Inspiring, Awesome, Rocking, Fun Workplace. Thank you.